Hello everyone and welcome to theCUBE's live coverage of Teradata Possible. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and analyst, Rob Strache. We are joined by Nimit Jain. He is the head of artificial intelligence at AWS. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And Mike Hutchinson, he is the chief customer officer at Teradata. Thank you both so much for coming on. Thank you. My pleasure. So, Mike, I'll start with you. What you. led Teradata to develop this partnership in the first place? So, you know, <clears throat> we adopted a cloud first strategy, uh, knowing that's the right strategy for Teradata as a company and our customers. And what we needed was a partner that we could work with to get our customers to the cloud, but we wanted them least risk. I mean, customers run mission critical workloads. Cannot introduce a lot of risk. Doesn't want to be long, um, doesn't want to be expensive. <clears throat> and so, working with AWS, we've got a great migration program. We are moving customers every weekend to the cloud on AWS, and you know what? They're getting there, it, we have mitigated the risk, they're getting great performance, but most importantly then, it gives them the ability, they're in the cloud, they can modernize. So getting that first step to get them to the cloud <clears throat> so we can follow on on modernization. It would seem that you know, from an AWS perspective, this is obviously good because more is better, but AWS has a rich history of this type of data and being always on and things of that nature, which is the, you know, the history of what is going on with in AWS, how do, you, how do you see the partnership working for AW, from an AWS perspective? Sure, uh, so we see Teradata as uh, the, has the best in class uh, vintage platform, right? And for all kind of uh, data workloads, whether it's very complex to business critical workloads, at the same time we know Teradata has been working globally with you know, multi, multiple organizations, large organizations. So this opens immense opportunity for AWS to partner and work and show our services and uh, offerings to those customers, and likewise for Teradata as well. Um, and if you see, um, Teradata specifically has also migrated a lot of the workloads to cloud. So with this partnership, we can accelerate the journey for our customers to the cloud. And you know, interestingly, if you look at it, AWS, uh, the, we have the least time to initiate any service on the cloud. Uh, also, if you look at Teradata, Teradata has been very active in the mar marketplace recently, and it has the largest average deal size working with us among all the ISVs. So the tagline around this partnership is better together, right. Mike. So for the, for the data executives out there who are not yet running Teradata um, Vantage on AWS, what does this mean? It, I mean, it sounds like marketing speak. But, it, but <laughs> it does sound like a little bit of marketing speak, but <clears throat> if you really kind of think about it, um, th that better together really starts with the integration of our engineering teams. You know, AWS has tons of fantastic native integrations that our customers want and need. Working together with the, uh, the Teradata engineering team so that they can be seamlessly accessed through the Vantage platform. So when we talk about working better together, it's not marketing, right? It actually is based with our engineering teams. Once we're through our engineering, we deploy it. Our operations teams are like this as well. So, you know, AWS is known for scalability, high availability. Um, we deliver that together to our customers. Uh, but if anything ever does go bump in the night, it, it's not just Teradata, it's AWS. We are together through the engineering, all the way through the delivery, out to the customer experience every day, 24-7. What, what is it from a AWS perspective that you're seeing that customers really, it helps their experience? I mean, I, having sure. been an Amazonian, it's always working backwards, right? So when you start to look at it, how are you helping the customers and how does Teradata, being there, help the customers work backwards? See, I think um, if you look at uh, the Teradata's vintage platform, right, is optimized to run on AWS for any kind of workloads. So for customers who are migrating, they can migrate with least risk and with high agility. And specifically this happens because of the same code, code base of vintage, right? And once you're on the platform with uh, vintage cloud offerings, the customer's ability for storage and compute to be separate. And for customers who want deeper insights to unlock from their data sets, we have ClearScape integrated with AWS SageMaker for deeper insights. And we also have plans to integrate with Amazon Bedrock, which is our new uh, generative AI offerings 
which is an API-driven service. Right. So all in all, with customers who are wanting modern infrastructure, they get the best of the both world, where they can easily, they get the best platform in terms of vintage, they get ease integration of all our services from Data Lake S3 to all our AIML stack. Yeah, that makes total sense. I think, again, it's the richness of services that AWS offers around the Vantage platform, or Vantage Cloud platform on AWS. It, it, it just seems like that is a natural fit, especially with the anthropic discussions and all the, you know, bring your own model and how you can keep it secure, and I think that becomes a big piece of it as well, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, we can't understate the value of those integrations, right? Um, it, and it, it makes Teradata just that much better on, on AWS. It gives customers a lot more flexibility, a lot more options, and SageMaker is a great example. The best in model ops combined with the, uh, the best performing uh, analytic database, you got a great combination there. What is the kind of feedback you're getting, Mike, from your customers um, around this partnership? What, what, what are you hearing in terms of what they are getting out of it? So, you know, first and foremost, I mean, they get, you know, what they need to run their mission critical business. They get stability, they get scalability, they get high availability. Um, so, you know, and, and those are frankly table stakes though. So everyone expects this. But what they're also seeing is they're seeing that it, with this deeper partnership that they have, is just this rapid innovation that we're able to do because AWS is doing it as well and delivering more out. So with Vantage Cloud Lake, we deliver a new release every month. Every 30 days there's new capabilities. And many of those capabilities are brought from the fact that we're natively integrating with cloud native services. So customers are seeing the ability to innovate faster at the same time knowing that their mission critical workloads are protected, they're performing, and you know, getting the business outcomes they're looking for. Yeah, and I'm just building off of that because I think Gen AI is all the rage, right? And, I, and I think there's a lot of discussions. How is this AI and machine learning really helping customers move forward, this integration of Teradata Vantage Cloud and AWS? See, I think if you look at Teradata and AWS has been really working together to transform AIML opportunities for customers and with the lowest TCO and with high you know, return on investments. And if you look at specifically, you know, what is driving those opportunities for customers, first is, you know, the customers are able to experiment very fast because of the integration with ClearScale and our SageMaker. Then, customers who want to operationalize and scale those models, they are able to do much faster. For customers who want to do more complex predictive and prescriptive analytics, they can le leverage all their enterprise data with very ease. And at the same time, we are giving flexibility of choice to the customer to choose the right tool for the right job. So in summary, the Teradata and AWS is driving customers in their AIML journey across the life cycle, starting from data preparation to model training to model deployment. When you're talking about this need for innovation that, that, that your customers are, are, are hungering for right now, and, and you said this, is, this partnership really enables that and fuels it, so how are you helping customers make the changes, uh, adopt this kind of experimental entrepreneurial mindset that they need in order to push their organizations forward? Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing that the shift I've seen in the last, even just six months, um, with AIML, customers are willing to really run a lot more proof of concepts, right? They want to try 10 things knowing maybe we'll only get two success cases out of it. It's an investment, it, it, it's a changing in the culture, the mindset. You actually see more of it coming out of the business side than yes. you do IT, uh, the data scientists. Um, I, so you need to change the culture to accept the fact that, hey, we're not going to be accessible with all these POCs. You know, if you come at from a typical IT point of view, you want every POC to be successful. You got to realize that's not going to be the case. So a little bit of it is changing culture, giving people the permission to do these POCs. And what you're going to, you heard Steve um, McMillan on stage this morning talking about a couple of them. I mean, people are doing some radical innovation. You know, a smart physical shopping cart in a grocery store telling you, hey, you forgot the cheese. I mean, that's, you know, it, it, it's taking the, the step forward to try new things, and it's great to see. 
And, and I think, again, you guys, I think you're going to be on a panel later today. Right. And what are some of the key, I guess you could say, trends and things that people should be aware of with cloud data and analytics going forward? What are, what are some of the things that you're looking at that people should be, you know, they're sitting at home, hey, we need to take a look at this and look further? See, one of the most important things which a baby cloud has produced is generative AI, right? With the immense compute and storage available, I think it was able to train large models at extensive scale. So I think one thing we have to realize is that the data will be key differentiator for all the organizations who want to harp on this journey. And why? Because if you know, if either a customer is a model trainer or a model consumer or they're tuning their models, all of them, they have to leverage their enterprise data. So they have to ensure that you know, there are certain guardrails they follow around accesses of the data, the PIA information of the data, regulatory conditions of the data, before they start using those models. Absolutely. Uh, so I talk about those. At the same time, I also talk about foundation models, right, which is powering all of the generative AI. And all of us are familiar with ChatGPT, right? It created a lot of attention from all our customers. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of people who are working on foundation models, they realize that this has, has been around for a while. Right. And what we realize is that the innovation will continuously happen in this space in terms of model architectures, you know, new way of solving problems, and we have just started. You know, we say that generative AI, uh, every day is a year now, right? It feels like a year. So you know, this, what my talk would be all about, so happy uh, if you can attend, uh, mm -hmm. listen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what you're just saying, and it's really mind-boggling, because it's true, you hear that a lot, every day is a year, and you're talking about this, this push for innovation, this idea that you have to have new releases every 30 days. Um, this sounds exhausting. Right. And, and burnout is a really big problem, especially in technology companies. How do you keep team, your teams motivated and focused on end goals without burning, the, burning their, their candle at both ends and making sure that they are, they are also getting what they need to remain creative and open to all these things. So, you know, from the Teradata point of view, it's, 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 it's a couple things. One is, again, it's a, a lot for us, it's about our culture, right? You know, a, we are a people first company, making sure that, you know, we need people to be innovative. You can't be innovative if you are, you know, stressed out from the last project and, and, the, and the upcoming project. So, you know, taking care of the employees, uh, we do some pretty innovative things around that. But then it's also making sure they have the tools that they need. And, you know, our, for us, running all of our services team, having that direct line in development, I mean, it is a great relationship we have internally. So when our developers, our data scientists, our DBAs, you know, things that they think that will make life better, not just for them, but for our, our customers, they have an open door to our development team who's responsive, works with them, making so, you know, really, it's really making sure they feel supported, technology side, on the personal side, and keep them engaged. How, how, do you have some customer examples of how this partnership and how your customers and Teradata Vantage and Cloud and on AWS and how they're leveraging that? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean many of them. A lot yeah. of them are here today. I'll, I'll mention a couple of them. So Brinker International, you may not know the name, but I bet you know the name Chili's because you yeah. probably ate there sometime <laughs> in the last month. Um, uh, Brinker uh, runs restaurant chains, Chili's being one of them. They use Vantage on AWS. Uh, to really simplify and manage their entire supply chain across 1,600 restaurants. So, what is the demand? What supplies do I need? What staff do I need? Bringing it all together so when you go in on Thursday night to get a margarita, they have everything they need to support. That's one. One of the world's largest banks um, uh, uses, again, Vantage on AWS across seven different major divisions. And when we talk about scalability, they have trillions of transactions every day that run in this platform. And so, you know, we've got customers that use it for, um, you know, really a key core part of their business. But those are two great examples. Um, actually, both of them are here with us uh, today. And sharing their proof of concept and sharing, I mean, what, at, the, at, the, at conferences like these, what are the conversations like, and how are you participating them in them, and in, in, in trying to uh, be a fly on the wall, but also a participant in, yeah. in getting out all, all these insights? Yeah, you know, I just I, I just ran over here from uh, a customer meeting, and um, you know, 
They are uh, you know, a large, large CPG customer of us. And, and what they were really looking for is they want to be, they want, they want to see a three-way with us, AWS, and them. They want us to bring the best of engineering thing because what they feel like is we, we have delivered so much together, they are running a huge platform with us, but they're like, we think we can do more. But we, they do believe in the fact that it's going to be all three legs on that stool to get together, and so we'll plan an engineering day with them here soon uh, with AWS, and we'll sit down and we'll innovate and try to figure out what's next for them. That's what customers are looking for, right? They, 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 they're, they've they're got to the cloud, they've innovated, but they're just they're looking for how do we push it further. So the, every conversation is somewhere around that topic. Excellent, I want to sit down and innovate too. So Let's do it. <laughs> Let's Mike do it. Inman, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for the Absolutely, time. thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strecce. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Teradata Possible.